Hi friends, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX tutorial. In this episode, we're going to look at the JavaFX combo box control. Let's create a new project. File, New, Other, JavaFX Project. We'll call this Combo Box Demo. Click Finish, then we right click, Build Path, Configure Build Path, Class Path, Add Library, User Library, we'll add JavaFX, we'll click Apply and Close. Let's open the main class. And this is the shell of a JavaFX program that's created by Eclipse with the help of the EFX Clips plugin. We run it at this point, we'll have a stage with no contents. And there we are. Combo box is essentially a text field and a button that when clicked pops up a list of values for a user to select from. So let's create a new combo box. CB equals new combo box. We'll import combo box class. The items in a combo box are held in an observable list. And in our example, these items are going to be strings. So let's get the observable list from our combo box. list is combo box .get items. And now we can start adding items to our combo box. List dot add. And I'm going to add a list of programming languages. So there's our list. Let's add our combo box to our border pane, which is the root of our scene graph. Add it to the center. So when we run the program, we should see a combo box with the list of languages that we've added to the observable list. And there they are from Java on down to SQL. The combo box has a value property that contains the selected item in the list. So let's now add a label in the bottom area of our border pane that we can use to display some messages as we go through learning a little more about the combo box. I'm going to add the label to a horizontal box and then add the horizontal box to the bottom area of our border pane. New H box. Set padding of 10. Now we'll add the label to the H box. And we'll add the H box to the bottom area of our border pane. And let's run. So when we make a selection in a combo box, that triggers an action event and we can listen for that action event and then get the current state of the value property to see which item has been selected in our combo box. So let's have a look at that. CB dot set on action. Organize our imports again. We'll add the unimplemented handle method. And in our combo box, we'll add the 
parameter since this is a generic class. We're adding strings to the combo box. And then in our handle event, once the user has made a selection in the combo box, we can use the value property to get the current selection. So CB dot value property dot get and we'll print that to our message label. So let's give that a run. We'll now click to open up the combo box. We'll make a selection, say we'll choose Rust, and then you see Rust down at the bottom. I'm just gonna change that message a little bit. Run that one more time. Select Java, you have selected Java. Select Python, you've selected Python, etc., etc. Uh, two other things that uh, I want to make you aware of. One is the number of visible rows when we open up the combo box. By default, that number is 10. Then we can always change that. There is a method cb dot set visible row count. Let's change that to five from our default of 10. We'll run our program again. And this time when we click on the button for the drop down in the combo box, we should only have five items displayed and we do. Another thing about a combo box is that you can make it editable. By default, you can only select from those items that are currently in the combo box. However, you can make the combo box editable such that the user can then type a value into the combo box. cb.set editable true. Run. And now you see that the combo box is editable. We still have the button for the drop down but now it's split into a button and a text area where you can actually enter another value in if those in the list don't meet your needs. So say for example, we don't see the language COBOL. So if we want to type in COBOL, let's type C-O-B-O-L. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content when I release new videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.